Okay, so we have this map, and it's now time to start showing you guys um, some interactivity stuff, and also what this will look like on the web. So one way you can quickly tell what something will look like on the web is to hit Control Enter. And what this will do, and why don't you do it right now, if you're on a Mac, hit Command Enter. Control Enter will show you, whoops, I don't know what I just did, sorry about that will show you what your map will look like on the web and it shouldn't look like this I just ex I've got one of these magic mouses that isn't so magical I'm gonna do it again here so this is how big our stage would be on a screen and basically as you can see there's nothing showing up outside of our masked area so we've done well this is what our map would look like now there's no interactivity yet because we haven't added enter any anytime you want to know how your maps looking versus like it in reality, how it'll look for the end user versus on your stage, hit control enter. What this does is it exports quickly a, a, a shockwave flash file, an SWF file, and that's what we will actually embed in our websites. Now, um, so what we have here is a map of uh, Wisconsin River Falls, and what we're going to add is a button because maybe we don't need these. Uh, these I don't know, building labels on all the time. So how do you create buttons? Well, there are a couple of ways. You can go to the library and you can, uh, in, in your library, there's, there are sometimes pre-made pre -made, uh, buttons. Actually, I think here it is under common libraries. We can go to the buttons and there are a variety of buttons that are pre-made for us. And they're kind of defaultish, but they, they work. So if we go in here, you can see here's a round button, a red button, a green button bubble buttons, etc. But probably the best way is to draw your own. So, to draw your own button, you just click on the rectangle tool here. And uh, what is always a good idea is to is to create a new layer for your buttons. So what I would do is click on down here, new layer. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine menu buttons. And let's just draw. We're not going to do anything fancy now. You can always change how it looks later. But we'll draw a little nice button here. Maybe give it a slight variation in tone. But keep it with the theme of the map. That outline is ridiculously thick. How do we change it? We go up here to properties. And we will type in a two thickness. Or even a one thickness. All right. So now we've got our little button here. And to make a button, it's pretty straightforward. You hit F8. Um, on a Mac, you normally have to hit Fn F8. All right, so we hit F8. And up here, there are a couple options. We can create a movie clip, which is the default normally, a button, or a graphic. We're going to create a button. And I'm going to center register this again. And we'll just call this uh, button. You can call it generic button or anything. but. Um, if you're gonna, we'll probably use the same button for several things because we want to standardize the look. So I'm just gonna call it button. Hit OK. And what we have now is this new button, and it's still not interactive or anything, but we've identified something as a button, and therefore it has the properties that a button would have. Um, Flash has some built-in properties. Another really important thing: anytime you create something that's gonna be interactive, and I know you might not think of it as a button as interactive but people are going to press it or hover over it or whatnot so therefore it needs to be interactive whenever you create something like this if you look up in properties it says button and you'll see this instance name you need to give everything an instance name now we just created this button and called it button that's not an instance name what an instance name is is when you have one item selected what that particular button's name is so we're gonna call this uh, building labels I don't know. We'll call this building but button or something. Something that has to do with what it's going to do. So we're going to use this button to turn the labels on and off. So building button. All right. Why is this important? Well, let me show you something else. So if we go back to library, and I have something in here called a generic button that I made a little bit ago. You don't have that. But see our button is here? We can click and drag as many of these buttons as we want out onto the stage. So, unfortunately, it's not lining up for me very well, but there's an alignment tool. All right. 
get rid of that. There we go. So I drag this one out. If I go back to properties, the original button we have is called building button. This one, which is also a button, has no instance name. We'll call this uh, title button. So this one will turn the title on and off or something. All right. So now we have two buttons, one with an instance name of building button, one with an instance name of title button. The next step is to um, double click into one of these. And actually, if you double click into one because of the same button and edit how it looks, it'll tweak both. Actually, let me show you. So if I double click into this, what we're going to see is the timeline changes down here. What we have are four states. We have an up state, an over state, a down state, and actually the, a hit state, which is kind of more philosophical than real. The up state is um, how the button looks at all times, unless someone interacts with it. The over state, the over place in the timeline, is if someone moves a mouse or a pointing device over it, how it looks. The down state is if someone touches it with their finger or clicks on it with a mouse, how it looks. And the hit state says, what area um, is the area of interaction? So how, let me explain this. First of all, we've got um, the up state. This is how our button looks. What you can do is you can right click over that frame and go to copy frames. And then you can click in the over and right click and hit paste frames. So at all times, our button looks like this. When someone moves their mouse over it, Right now, it still looks like this, but what we can do is we can edit this. We could, when someone moves their mouse over it, maybe we'll want it to have um, to darken, so a black outline and a darker interior, so that they know that they're over it. Right? They'll, they'll, they'll. It'll be a visual cue that they've done something to this. Now, when they press it, maybe we want something else. If you actually um, go to insert keyframe, what it'll do is just insert, it'll copy the frame you're in into this frame. So you can copy paste frame or insert keyframe. When they go down, perhaps we really want something drastic, like white interior and red exterior. This is terrible design, so but I'm just giving an example. So these are the three real states. Then there's this other one called hit. What hit is, is it tells you what, the area that someone can actually touch in order to be over or pressing down. Now sometimes, for example, on mobile devices where buttons are really small, people don't hit exactly in the button because their fingers are fat and chubby. So what you can do is go to insert keyframe, is you can use a variety of tools including the free transform tool to make this bigger. And maybe you actually want it to spread further over here and over here. What this will do is it means if someone moves their finger or their pointer and it gets even here, it'll count as being over the button and it will change color. Or, or if someone presses down here with their mouse, it'll still change color, even though the, the button is much smaller than that. All right, so what I want to do now is go and con hit Control Enter. And if I move my mouse here, See how it changes color even though I'm not quite over the button yet? That's because um, of the hit area. If I press down, even up here, it changes color. Hey, this one's changing too. Anyone know why? Because this is the same button. This is building button. This is title, title button, but they are both button. And any change you make to a library symbol, we could, we can double click and edit it in here too. Any change you make to a library symbol is going to be reflected in all of those symbols, even though they have different instance names. So um, that's why this is getting kind of wonky. All right, what I'm going to do actually is copy this frame, paste this frame here. Um, I don't want it to be bigger area of hitting. So that's great. We've created interactivity. We've created change when you roll over something. Next step is to make these buttons do something. Make it so when you click on a button, it interacts or does something with something else on the map.